What, what would you say you do here? Well, look, I already told you. I deal with the goddamn customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's another week, another interview with Adventures in Poor Taste for X-Men Monday and really gives you another peek into everything that's wrong with Marvel Comics. Obviously, we talk about these things and you, you generalize them and you, you try to throw a few examples out there to kind of back up your theory or the, the information that you're trying to, to portray as a communicator, being myself here. But when you see an interview like this Rebecca Roanhorse interview with Adventures in Poor Taste, it really points out every single thing that I've been saying and backs it up and really um, accentuates it, lets you know what I've been saying is correct. <laughs> and really, there's a reason a lot of Marvel comics don't feel good anymore because they're not being written by comic writers. They're not being by, written by people that like comic books. They're not being written by creators that understand comic books. And in this case, this this writer like really doesn't even know X-Men at all. We'll get into those details. But, man, I love these Adventures in Poor Taste X-Men Monday interviews are just fantastic because every week is just another glimpse into what a massive failure the Jonathan Hickman X-Men era under Jordan White just is as Jonathan Hickman is getting ready to, to leave the series. I imagine a few of you know what the series Phoenix Song Echo is. I believe the first issue came out. My good friend Perch, I believe, obliterated that issue because it was so poorly written. It, it was so poorly written, you would almost come to the conclusion that the writer didn't know how to write a comic book. Well, it turns out that is the case because the writer, Rebecca Roanhorse, had an interview with AITP and they talked to her about Phoenix Song Echo. And there are far more questions that I'm going to cover here. I'm going to cover four that really highlight and uh, really show you exactly what I'm talking about. Like I said, these this really, really <laughs> exemplifies all the stuff I've been trying to communicate. And so I'll, I'll read the question. I'll read the answer. And then I'll give my uh, my commentary and my analysis on what we're seeing here and why Marvel. Here's a spoiler. Marvel do not care about the characters. They do not care about the universe. They do not care about the stories. They only care about being, <laughs> with a lot of this stuff is being able to virtue signal and to be able to check some boxes and to say that they've they hired this person or that person rather than hiring somebody that actually likes comic books. That's why Phoenix Song Echo sucked ass. That's why a vast majority of Marvel comics today, and DC for that matter, we're going to talk about Marvel because this is a Marvel uh, interview, they are unmemorable. The, the best you can say about most of these comics is they are completely inoffensive. Most of them are not good. A lot of them are terrible. So let's get into this this interview, and it really highlights all the stuff we've been talking about in the channel. I love it when I can get something like this, where if somebody puts their words you know, out there, and it really just backs up all the stuff I've been saying here on the channel. So near, near to anyone that says, Wes, you don't even know what you're talking about. Of course Marvel's going out there and hiring the best damn comic book writers that they can. Balderdash, it's not true. And it has been true for a long, long time. So this is the first question from Adventures in Poor Taste to Rebecca Roanhorse. How did the opportunity to revisit Maya Lopez in Phoenix Song Echo come about? When they say revisit, she had written a short story in one of those um, Marvel Voices uh, anthology comics. Is this something you pitched or did Marvel reach out to you? So how did you get this opportunity to write the character again? Did you pitch it, or did Marvel come to you? This is what Rebecca, but what Rebecca had to say. Marvel reached out to me. It took a while for us to find the space to take on the series, but I'm so happy we made it work. Perhaps that's why the Phoenix, uh, you know, Phoenix song echo story reigns so hollow and uninteresting, because the writer themselves had no story to tell. Marvel didn't reach out and say, "Hey." What is your take on this? What would you like to do with it? They said, would you please write this character? Because we want to have 
a Native American write the character because it's a Native American character. And Rebecca's like, hey, sure, if you're going to pay me, I'll write it. I have nothing to say about the character, but, uh, you know, I'm going to do it. Is it a paying gig? And like I said, uh, uh, I think last week, when I was talking about how editors really are an enormous issue with comic books, these editors are the ones coming up with the pitches. They're the ones coming up with the story ideas. They're coming up with the direction of the universes of the characters. And that's why they all suck, because none of these editors are fucking writers. Show me the comic book that even the group editor on X-Men, Jordan White, has ever written that was good. Doesn't exist let alone the editor of this damn book. They don't have writers in here as part of the editorial group, but they are letting the editors come up with the storyline pitches and the future of the characters, and then they are going out and casting the writers without asking them, how would you do this? What's your take on this? We're going to pay you to write the story I came up with, even though I'm not a writer and I don't know anything about the universe either. And you wonder, wonder, how is it that so many Marvel titles feel completely hollow? Why is it that so many of these X-Men titles just feel so limp and lifeless and just full of nothing? Just a, a you know, just a, a void of any type of, uh, you know, interesting takes on the characters, interesting stories to tell. It's because it's all coming down, or a lot of it's coming down from the editors. And in this case... Rebecca Roanhorse did not approach Marvel. When Marvel didn't approach and say, hey, is there a character you want to write? Or is there a story that you had to tell that you would like to be part of the Marvel Universe? Absolutely not. Marvel went out there and hired this writer to tell the story that they wanted her to tell. Here's the next question from Adventures in Poor Taste. You've written short stories and novels, and you've written for television. How has writing comics been so far? And are there any challenges inherent in the medium you didn't expect? You hear that part of that last part of the questions. Is there anything about the the comic book medium itself that, you know, kind of surprised you a little bit or that you had to adapt to? Spoilers. There was no adapting. And you can see it in the comic book. Here's what Rebecca had to say. I've enjoyed writing for comics which is a much more immediate and visual medium for storytelling. It's truly amazing to collaborate with artists like Luca Maresca, Kyle Charles, and color artists Carlos Lopez and Brian Valenza. The way they interpret and bring a writer's vision to life is an honor. Amazing stuff. Not a single word about the differences or challenges from going from being a television writer to writing a comic book, from being a, a writer of novellas or novels to being a, a comic book writer. I just wrote my story as normal, and uh, you know, and, and the artist did the best they could to interpret it into a comic book story. I.e., the dumbing down of the medium that I've been talking about for months here on the channel. These writers don't know how to write comic books. Rebecca didn't even answer the question, likely because Rebecca doesn't know that there's a difference as far as storytelling and craft between a comic book and a television series or a comic book or a novella or a comic book or a novel. And we wonder why we have such limp dick, lame ass comic book stories going on nowadays. Because you can tell Rebecca never came into this project with the idea or the mindset that I want to tell a good comic book story because Rebecca, no fault of their own, Marvel went out and hired Rebecca. If you come out and hire me, it must mean that you think that I can do a good job. They're not hiring comic book writers. And then we're not getting comic book stories. No one's using the medium to the fullest or the very few people are. And we wonder why comic books are struggling. Why wonder why comic books are so boring that they don't keep everyone coming back anymore. Why they can't keep people on the hook on a periodic monthly release schedule. Because a lot of these writers are not comic writers. They're television writers. It's a different skill set. It's a different medium. It's a different storytelling venture. And the dumbing up down of comic books, the greatest storytelling medium in the world to the level of television, is killing it. 
right here. Confirmed by Rebecca. Now the next question. I was wondering if you were an X-Men fan before getting to write Phoenix Song Echo. And if so, what was your first X-Men experience? Well, this is important. Writing an X-Men character, writing within the X-Men universe, you would imagine you would want to know you would want somebody that would, you know, have a general idea or knowledge about X-Men comics, the universe, and things of that nature. This is a response. Shocking, right? You're gonna be real shocked. This is what Rebecca had to say. My first exposure to the X-Men was the animated series. That's completely normal. A lot of people's first exposure to the X-Men was the animated series, perhaps even, uh, you know, the arcade game, which is absolutely was uh, was an enormous hit. Nothing wrong with that. I love that show and later was thrilled when the X-Men made it to the big screen. Next exposure was movies. I'm less familiar with the comics, but I'm catching up, coming up to speed. Only familiarity with X-Men before getting an X-Men related comic book. The animated series and the movies. Sure, there is some relation to the universes and there are similarities between the characters, but there are, are there's a big difference between understanding the X-Men animated show or the X-Men in the Fox movie universe and actually understanding the characters in the X-Men comic universe. Yes, all the great stuff, most of the great stuff in the animated series and, the, and anything that ever worked on the movies was mined out of the comic books, but it was dumbed down to the lowest common denominator, i.e. mass-produced movie stuff. No familiarity with the actual X-Men themselves. No familiarity with the X-Men comic universe. Likely, no familiarity with the Marvel Comics universe. And we wonder... Why you take someone that's a pretty mildly mannered guy that takes a, a little bit to actually get perch pissed off and to really take an enormous shit on a comic book. And when he read Phoenix Song, Echo, number one, he was beside himself with the lack of quality, the lack of story crap, the lack of, of an ability to tell a comic book story. Shocking. That this could happen when you go out there and you hire somebody to write an X-Men comic that, has, that doesn't know anything about X-Men comic books themselves. Nothing about the universe. What is wrong with Marvel Comics? Why do they hate their universe so much? Why do they not respect these characters? Why do they not respect the medium that they work in? Marvel Comics has one job to produce the best superhero-based comic books that they can around their own universe and their characters. They don't care. They don't appreciate the medium. They are not fans of comic books themselves. If you were a fan of comic books and you read the script from Rebecca the first time, you would have said, this is dog shit. Take it back or you're fucking fired. I'm going to find somebody that actually knows X-Men, knows comic books and bring them in here. It, they don't care about that stuff anymore. Just another just example of that. Just my first exposure, the animated series. I was glad they, to see them on the big screen. I'm not familiar with the comics, but I'm coming up to speed. It, it's, it's very difficult. You know, I probably work covering comic books like 50 to 65 hours a week. I haven't taken a day off since my son was born. Well, I guess unless you count the two days I was in the hospital when my son was hospitalized recently. I put my heart and soul into this channel to cover comic books. It's not everything I do. My number one priority obviously is my family my wife, my children, my relationship with, with God. Those are my priorities, God being number one, wife, children. But comic books is pretty far up there. I'm not getting paid by Marvel Comics. I'm not getting paid by DC Comics. Why do I care and they don't? These are professionals in the comic book industry, and they, could, they couldn't care enough 
to go out and hire somebody that had read a goddamn X-Men comic before. They couldn't go out there and hire somebody or even have them pitch a story for the comic book because they're hiring based on surface traits. Not for love of the medium, not for love of the characters, not for love of the craft. None of that. And that's why everything sucks so bad. There's another question. We'll get to this one. This one's probably my favorite. Although I've I put I've put my heart and soul into this video, so we'll see if I still if I got much juice left for this one. My throat started to hurt because uh still got a little bit of a sore throat. This is what AIPT had to ask, had to ask. Beyond the Dark Phoenix saga, there have been a lot of other Phoenix based stories. I'm curious, did you read or revisit any before writing the series? And if so, do you have a personal favorite? First of all, the the answer should always be the Dark Phoenix saga. Yes, there have been other there have been other hosts, but if you're going to be writing a story about the Phoenix, there's one place that you should go as your inspiration: the Dark Phoenix saga, Chris Claremont, John fucking Burke. So why give them the me out in that in that question? Is beyond me, but AIPT is, you know, they are shill media. They get these interviews for a reason because they're not there to press. So they, they gave them an out immediately. You will not believe the answer on this. One. Not that there are a lot of great places to mine information about the Phoenix. There is one great place. It's called the Dark Phoenix Saga. <laughs> this is the answer from Rebecca. Yes, I always try to do my research. I doubt that. And it felt necessary to understand where the Phoenix had been in order to know where she'd go. I love Jason Aaron's take on the 1 million BC Phoenix fire hair. Jason Aaron's 1 million BC Phoenix atrocity is the inspiration for Phoenix song Echo. And you wonder why it sucks dog dicks, why it is an enormous load of shit. Jason Aaron hasn't written a good comic story in years now. Jason Aaron should have never been able to touch any of this stuff, to be completely honest. His Avengers run has gone on, is so far past its sell-by date, it's not even funny. But the fact that the editors themselves at Marvel can be like, listen, if you're going to do something about Phoenix, don't read the Jason Aaron stuff. Everybody hates it. It's, it's insignificant to what you're trying to do now. Rebecca's inspiration for Phoenix Song Echo. The Jason Aaron, 1 million BC, Phoenix. Enough said, right? Enough fucking said. 